would you guys categorize this as a budget you could go to the polls with? Why or why not? Well, if I can start uh, this time, uh, Cody, listen, that's not our priority. Going to the poll is nowhere on our radar. Uh, we want to continue doing what is the most important thing for Canadians today, and that's the health and security of Canadians. As uh, we've indicated through uh, the interview today, there has been many, many investments for the sectors that uh, of the economy which needed support, the business community, the individual. That has been our main focus, that continues to be our main focus. Uh, but, you know, Cody, I have to say, we have to govern. And if the opposition uh, continues to delay uh, uh, bills that have financial support for communities, we can't allow that to happen either. So what I'm saying is we are sticking to our priority, which is continue to support Canadians, but we want to make sure that the opposition has that focus. And at times they seem to be bouncing around and, and delaying uh, various programs and supports uh, for Canadians, and that's unacceptable. We've asked, I know, i give you an example, you know, about a month ago, we were uh, talking about, we had to pass that bill, uh, MED, which is medically assisted in dying. And, and uh, I think it was on March 13th, I'm not sure the exact day, but the Friday that bill had to be passed. And, and uh, because the courts had uh, given us that specific day, we asked for extended debate on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of that week. And the opposition, the conservative, refused to extend the debate so we could get this done and pass by Friday. We ended up having to extend, if you want, uh, the deadline for our uh, bill. So, you know, that's an example that we, every party, every representative in that house needs to be focusing right now on the health and safety of all Canadians. And that's where we're at and we'll continue to do that. I'll just add, I mean, Daryl, Daryl put it out. I, one thing I would say in terms of what surprised me is uh, in the fall economic statement, uh, Christy Freeland announced a series of continued business supports uh, back in November. Most of your listeners, unless they're really watching the House of Commons closely, would probably be surprised to know that it took almost six months. Uh, it just recently passed Bill C-14. It's, it's in the Senate. I, I, I don't know if it's actually received royal assent. That's how long it took. Uh, in part because some of the opposition were using delay tax tactics, procedural elements. Uh, we need to be able to get that support out to help Canadians. To answer your question, I don't want to say more directly, but no one, as Daryl mentioned, no one's looking for an election. If it were to happen, Pat, I, I, I stand pretty proud of what that budget represents for a future, the investments of what our government plans. And certainly it is a signaling of where, after we get through this pandemic, where we can make those investments to continue to help support Canadians. And of course, the budget also speaks to getting us through the pandemic. So that's first and foremost. Uh, but we're in a minority parliament. We don't control when that happens. And if it did happen, I think the budget speaks for itself in terms of what our vision and what our, what our hopes are for Canadians. If the election did happen, how are you both uh, gearing up for it with the readiness? Well, this is my first go around. Daryl can speak to this a little bit, but you know, my perspective is, uh, Pat, we. Minority parliaments, I think we might be the second or third longest minority parliament in Canadian history. You know, even at, I think it's only been about 18 months. Uh, governments don't generally tend to last longer than two years. Um, so, you know, in this business, every day, as Scott Bryson reminded me, the day after you get elected is the day one of your next campaign because people judge you on how you're able to deliver your engagement in the community, the way in which you're trying to uh, be an advocate for the people that you represent. So, I don't want to speak for Daryl, but day one starts, you know, right after the last election of trying to build a brand and a style that says that you're there for the people. Um, but certainly, of course, we've been engaging throughout, making phone calls on weekends, trying to stay connected with constituents, not under the guise of, hey, there's an election coming. It's more, I want to check in with you. How do you feel about how the government's performing? How do you feel about me as a member of parliament? So that work will continue. Uh, and it also allows us to stay connected to our constituents. Uh, obviously, if something were to happen right now, which I don't think it will, um, but if it were, 
uh, it would be a very virtual kind of campaign, similar to what we're doing now, probably less door knocking, uh, particularly with what's going on right now in our province. But things are changing dramatically, and uh, it's just trying to stay connected to constituents, whether it be phone calls, Zoom calls, or otherwise. Yeah, uh, Pat, I agree 100% with Cody. I mean, our focus, as we've indicated before, is on our record. Uh, what's more important uh, than ever because of the pandemic is communication. Can we communicate the message? Are people getting the information they require? I'm so proud of uh, our prime minister, you know, standing out there in front of the cottage and talking to Canadians day in, day out, day in, day out, because that's what it's about. It's about making sure that people have the information. That's why the job you do, Pat, is so important, is getting that information out to the constituents, to people. Because like Cody said, not everybody, I know my dad would sit down and watch CPAC all day long. And if, I, if, the, if he was living today, he'd probably tape it three times and watch it again just to watch me go at it. But, but, but that being said, you know, uh, we got to get the information out. And, and Pat, I'm telling you, I think I mentioned this before to you, but I, I have to say it again. I have never been prouder to be a member of parliament, a representative of the people for the people than through this pandemic. Because real democracy was at display. What I mean by that, uh, Pat, is that every night, and Cody was there, I think we went like 47 nights in a row where the liberal members, we were on the phone for a couple of hours every night, seven days a week, talking about how, what type of programs would be necessary to support Canadians as quickly as possible. And, and we were able to work with the, the public service, if you want, and they did a fabulous job because they put programs together and initiative and, uh, you know, in a month or two when it would take two years to do so. Yes, we made mistakes, but you know what? If mistakes is okay when you make the changes that are necessary, you improve and you get better because of the mistakes. But what I like the most is that once the program started coming out and I was listening to various organizations or individuals saying, yeah, but that doesn't work for me because I have this situation. Bingo. The next night I was on the phone, uh, Cody was on the phone or other MPs saying, hey, that's not working for this group or for this sector. What can we do to make it fit? Because we got to help every Canadian. We can't let anybody slip through the cracks. And when it came to the business community, and after all the program wrote, we couldn't juggle anymore. We said, we're going to put another program with a COA. So all those who never got any money through any of the programs will get some funding and support. That's how our government tried. But what made me feel so good is not only did I play a role in helping uh, develop those programs, but also tweaking those programs so that we could make life better for individual and communities. And that's what it's all about. That's why I was elected. And that's why I will continue. My dad had a saying, Pat, I know you heard it before. You know, my people need, my people deserve, my people expect. It's about our people. And that's what we're doing. And I think I can go out there and sell that to my constituents the next time around. All right, I'm going to try and uh, get... Just, okay. just before we go to that, I, I just want to... Daryl hits on it. There was really good communication, and, and, and I wasn't around during the last parliament, but certainly he just spoke very passionately. One example I want to give you is around the, the Canada Emergency Business Account. And so small business owners will remember, originally the criteria was you had to have at least $50,000 payroll. We were able to get that down to $20,000 payroll because, you know, whether it's in Daryl's riding or mine, there's a lot of small family businesses that might just either employ themselves or maybe just one or two others, and they didn't have a payroll to hit 50000 That was one of the proud things that I, I saw directly because of the advocacy. We were able to get that down to 20000 to better reflect what we were hearing on the ground. And, and you know, I, I think to Daryl's point, there was a lot of adjustments on the fly as we were trying to build the airplane in the air, so to speak. So uh, I know that's a little bit of hindsight, but carry on. We, we got more questions, I'm sure. 